Numbers chapter 14 and verse number 7. And I believe I have someone ready to preach tonight. Where is Brother Jake? Jake, 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 where you at? Come on, you're going to preach. You said you'd preach. Oh, well. That's the way it goes. We'll give him a few more days. Let him practice. You've got to get up in the mirror and practice at home. All right, Numbers 14 and 7. And they spake unto all the company of the children of Israel, saying, The land which we pass through to search to search it is an exceeding good land. If the Lord delight in us, then He will bring us into this land and give it us, a land which floweth with milk and honey. Only dwell not ye against the Lord. Neither fear ye the people of the land, for they are bred for us. Their defense is departed from them, and the Lord with us. Fear them not. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for this day. Thank you for this service. I ask you to anoint me, give me strength, God. Help us to preach your word in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. You may be seated. I'm glad that you're here tonight. There were 12 spies that went into Canaan land in the book of Numbers to spy out the land. Now, I wonder, without looking in your Bible, can you tell me the name of one of the spies? We have a Joshua. You're wrong. Joshua did not go spy out the land. Caleb went and spied out the land. But I will give you $50 of Sister Mary Trujillo's money if you could tell me the other 10. <laughs> Your money's safe, trust me. If you, I, no one cares about the other 10. No one really cares what their name was. Why? Because they had no desire for the promises of God. But in case you're wondering, Shemua, Shaflat, Caleb, Igel, Oshia, Palidi, Gadali. No wonder why they didn't want to fight because they didn't want their names written down. Manasseh, Amiel, Sethur, Nabi, and Gul. Boy, why couldn't that just been Tom, Dick, and Harry? It would have been a whole lot easier. But now you know all 12 of the spies' name. Now, one of the spies was kind of neat. One of the spies was the brother of Joshua. And he went in and spied out the land. But Joshua did not. Joshua only stood up for the right to go into the promised land with Caleb. He and Caleb stood up in front of the people and said, God can deliver us and God can give us the land. I want to tell you here tonight, somebody, you need to listen to me because God gave me a word for you and your situation that there are some things that are worth fighting for. There are some things worth fighting for. Psalm chapter 78, it refers unto, oh boy, tribe of... Starts with an E. Uh, not Manasseh. And, um, no boy. Hmm, my brain just went dead. That's horrible. Somebody turn the light switch off. Uh, it was the two tribes of, 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 of Joseph. It was, um, I keep wanting to say Ishmael. It's not Ishmael. Help me out, somebody. Manasseh, Ephraim. I told you it was Ephraim. It said, Ephraim, in the day of battle, turned back. In the day of battle, Ephraim turned back from the battle. Now, let me tell you what, there's two positions of history that it could be talking about. Number one, there was a time that his brother Gad, after they got in the promised land, decided to come in and steal the cattle of Ephraim. And the men of Ephraim loaded up a posse and they rode out against the people of Gad to get their cattle back. And Sister Red House, the history tells us that just as they were winning the battle, the men of Ephraim turned around and went home and gave up. 
because they were afraid that they could not win. However, Gad was defeated already and they didn't know it. And as Ephraim turned to go back home, Gad came up behind them and slaughtered them. That was not the first time, or the last time maybe I should say, because the next time history tells us that Ephraim had the responsibility to guard the Ark of the Covenant in the days of Eli when they took the Ark to battle against the Philistines. And as they were battling with the Philistines, they decided that they could not defend the Ark and they would run on home. And the Bible, and not the Bible, but history tells us that as they left the battlefield, the Philistines came up from behind them and once again slaughtered their warriors. Let me tell you something. You don't know when you're about to win your battle. You don't know when you're about to get over on your enemy. Your enemy is sitting there showing you the best he's got. But I want to tell somebody, greater is he that's within you than he that's in the world. You need to realize that there are some things worth fighting for. You need to realize that there are some things worth standing on your feet, looking the devil eyeball to eyeball and calling on the name of the Lord and know having victory over these things. You need to realize there are some things that are worth fighting for. You're sitting there wondering if you're winning. Don't quit. Don't quit. There is no weapon formed against you that shall prosper. Don't be like the crowd. The crowd says quit. There are some things worth fighting for, standing your ground for. Brother Job learned that. Job learned there were some things worth standing his ground for. Number one was his integrity. Number two was the fact that Jesus was his God and he was going to stand by God till anything it fell. He said, though he slay me. You know something? Some of us are ready to give up when the enemy comes against us. When things go bad. Sister Najoni, you ain't never had a job before, so I can pick on you. But one of these days when you lose your job, you'll be ready to quit God. Can I tell you something? That's no time to quit God. But how many of y'all, if God showed up and slapped you across the face and kicked dirt in your face and sand in your eyes, would you give up on God? Job said, though he slay me, I will serve him. There are some things worth fighting for. You need to fight for your walk with God because the day that you don't fight for it is the day you'll lose it. And it's the day that everyone will repeat after everyone else in the day of battle. Ephraim ran. Look at Psalm 68 in the day of battle. That's a song. It's in the book. And can you imagine being one of the men of Ephraim and the story and the song being sung about you that your daddy and your people had a nature of running whenever the battle got hot. Let me tell you something. There are some things worth fighting for. Job said, but he knoweth I can depend on Jesus. I can depend on Jesus. I can trust in Jesus. I can stand flat-footed, look the devil eyeball to eyeball. I don't care how bad his breath is. I don't care if he's never taken a shower. I can look the devil eyeball to eyeball and depend on Jesus. Yep. Amen. Why? Because he knows the way that I take. And when I, he hath tried me, I shall come forth as gold, and my foot has held its steps. His way have I kept and not declined. Neither have I gone back from his commandment of the commandment of his lips. I have esteemed the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. We live not by bread alone, but by every word that cometh out of the mouth of God. When we put his word above what we need, we will come out. We will be tried and we shall come out as gold. I'm telling somebody tonight, you need to learn how to fight because there's some stuff worth fighting for. There are some things in your life that is worth fighting for and you need to stand up and fight, 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 fight with Jesus. I like this. 
Hold your peace and let me alone. Wherefore do I take my flesh and my teeth and I put my mind, I put my life in mine hand. I like that. Let me tell you something. Everybody tells you you need to do it this way, you that way, you the other way. You know what? You can say what you want to say, but I'm going to buy down. I'm going to hold on. And if it means I'm, I, I'm, just, I'm just ridiculous in your sight, such a red house, I'm going to trust in Jesus. I'm going to believe in Jesus. Why? Because the devil's a liar and the father of it. Because the devil said I cannot be healed. Because the devil said I cannot be blessed. Because the devil said I cannot come through. But I'm telling you something. It's worth fighting for today. It's worth standing up for. It's worth believing for. It's worth living for. Amen. Job said, let me be weighed in an even balance that God may know mine integrity. I'm going to tell you what, I'm going to stand for my integrity. I'm going to stand that I have stood with Jesus. I'm going to stand here boldly and say, I have stood with Jesus. When everybody fell on my left hand, when people denied him on my right hand, I have stood with Jesus. When it would have been easier to, to steal, when it would have been easier to kill, when it would have been easier to lie and cheat and all of this other stuff, I held my integrity and I held on and I fought for my integrity and I'm going to make it. I'm going to make it through. Why? Because I have fought on the side of right. Let me tell you something. You need to fight for your integrity. You need to stand up and say, no, there are some lines I won't cross. There are some places I won't go. There are some things I won't say and there are some things I won't do because I am going to hold fast my integrity. Oh, somebody God's trying to talk to you tonight. Somebody... God is trying to deal with your heart tonight. I want to tell you something. There's some things worth fighting for. Let me tell you something today. Your dreams are worth fighting for. When God has given you vision and given you direction and given you understanding, it's worth fighting for. Oh, Joseph, he had to, he told about his dream. I dreamed, Daddy, that all of the stalks of brothers, all of the brushes fall down and bow before mine. Oh, man, his brothers got mad. His brothers rebuked him. His mama and daddy didn't even like it too much. But let me tell you something. That old boy said, I'm going to stand for my dream. I'm going to stand on my God gave it. I'm going to hold fast to it. I'm not going to back down on my dreams. I believe it can come to pass. Some of you in here tonight have had dreams and you have had promises in your life and you don't need to let them go too easily. You need to hold fast to dream. Even his mom and dad rebuked him at the second dream. When he dreamed that all the stars and the moon of heaven bowed down before him. I'm going to tell you what, old Joseph, he held fast that dream. And his dream came to pass. He had a lot of stuff come up against him. You see the junk that comes up in your life. The greater your dream does not necessarily mean the greater your junk. Hello? That's a false theology. You turn on any of these little TV preacher guys and they'll tell you, the greater God's blessing on your life, the greater your trial. That's a bunch of hogwash. Hello? I'm going to show you how to fix that in a minute. I'm going to show you how to get over your trial. You see, I, I've done told you before, the three Hebrew children, they went in a fiery furnace. They were the only ones that didn't know it was hot. We talked about that Sunday night. When you get plugged into Jesus, you don't know what's going on around you. Why? Because your eyes are on Him. It ain't on all the junk. It's when you get your eyes off of Him that you start going through the stuff. Hello? Oh, Joseph. He went through some junk. Man, old Potiphar's wife. Now, I don't know about you, but just my thinking. Old Potiphar probably had a good looking female lady woman. I mean, she's probably blonde hair, blue eyes, about five foot eight tall, just nice, slim, trim, beautiful lady woman. An FYT. Fine young thing. <laughs> Brother Carlos, do you think the right hand of the king should have anything less than, than, than something great and beautiful? That's why I have. <laughs> there you go, Brother Carlos. I set that one up. You hit a home run. I'm proud of you. Hello? She's like, hey... Come over here, big boy. <laughs> Bible says that old Joe said, I will not sin against my family and my God. And zoom, he got up out of there, ran out of there. She grabbed a hold of his coat. And she said, look what he, Joseph tried to get me. About a half of y'all would have gave up right then. Don't lie. 
Because you'd have thought, if the other half, you'd have thought about it. So the rest of us was only a thought away from giving up too. Let me tell you something. There's some fight we need to have in us. We need to have enough fight to stand for what's right. Year after year after year of being in jail, he held his integrity. He held what was right. He held what was true. And in the end of the story, what happened? He was Potiphar's boss. Can you imagine old Potiphar's wife every time poor Joe signed their paycheck? Potiphar had to just like swallowing crow. Whoops. Sure wish I'd have been nicer to that boy. Can I tell you something? This world, when it's all said and done, Sister Johnson, is going to wish they'd have been nicer to you because the Bible says, I'm going to bless those that bless you and I'm going to curse those that curse you. I'm going to stand for you. Jesus is on your side. Let me tell you something. God's stuff is worth fighting for. God's stuff is worth standing for. The devil's a liar and the father of it. Don't give up. Don't turn your back. Don't turn around. Live for God. Walk with Jesus and you'll make it to the other side. I'm sorry. I'm getting excited. I know I shouldn't be. It's just Wednesday night. We should all like not really be here in church. No, I'm sorry. I'm a little too excited for that. Oh, Jacob. I like Brother Jacob. Everybody's got his life all messed up. How many of y'all, you know, his mama named him Jacob. His mom and daddy named him Jacob. And we look up in the modern dictionary, and the, and the definition of Jacob in the modern dictionary is heel grabber. I don't think they had that dictionary back then. They just named him Jacob. I'm quite sure they didn't have strong concordance and a Hebrew lexicon in those days. Because can I tell you a secret? They didn't speak Hebrew. They were, it was just developing. We find out through scientific research, Hebrew began to be spoken in the life of this man, Jacob. It was a mixture of the Canaanites language and the Syrian language, and that's where you get Hebrew from. And Abraham didn't walk into the promised land speaking Hebrew. He was a Syrian. He spoke the Syrian language. But Jacob, Isaac and Jacob and Esau was raised in the Canaan land speaking like Spanglish is around us. Y'all know what Spanglish is? Y'all heard of Spanglish? Guess what? That's what they speak. That's what Hebrew is. It was a little mixture of all of it. Well, can I tell you something? He didn't have a Hebrew dictionary to tell him he was a heel grabber. We made that up. But if that makes you feel good about, Hebrew, about Jacob, you could feel that good about Jacob. But the angel come down, and one night, old Jacob was on his way back home. Old Jacob was on his way back into the promised land. Old Jacob had been back in Syria for 14 years, and now he's fixing to go back into the promised land. He's got all kind of wives. He's got all kind of children. He's got all kind of dogs, cats, and orangutans, and all kind of other stuff. Maybe he even had a couple of peacocks. I don't know. But here he goes back into the promised land, and he stops at the place, and he sends his wife and kids on a head. And he says tonight, and he begins to wrestle with the angel in the place where he had made a covenant before God. And he wrestled the angel all night long. Why? Because the promise that you promised me is worth fighting for. Let me tell you something. Some of you need to wrestle with an angel as opposed to wrestling with your brother. You see, you're out there trying to fight against your brother. But don't you realize we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against powers and principalities and spiritual wickedness in high places. And if you'll do your battleground on your knees, you'll find out that it's worth fighting for and you'll overcome it. Oh, hallelujah. I feel the Holy Ghost tonight. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. This thing called living for God is worth fighting for. It's worth standing for because the promises of God are yea and amen. They are more sure than the heaven and earth. He wrestled that angel all night long and God gave him a new name. He changed his old name from Jacob to Israel. Can I tell you something? What an awesome opportunity to be named by God. Not a lot of people in this world was named by the angels. You know what? Israel. Got you a new name. Abraham, you got a new name. It used to be Abram, now it's Abraham. It used to be Sarah, now it's Sarah. It used to be uh, uh, Jacob, and now it's Israel. 
You, oh, can you imagine being Samson? Your mama, before you were ever even thought of, God gave a name. Could you imagine being John the Baptist? The angel comes down and meets your dad, Zachariah, in the holies of holies and gives you a name and gives him a child with a name, Jesus. Oh, Mary, you're going to have a baby. You're going to call his name Jesus. Why? What, what difference does it make in a name? I'm going to tell you what the difference it makes in a name. There is authority in a name. There is authority in a name. That's why we're baptized in the name of Jesus. That's why we receive the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. All things done in the name of Jesus. Why? Because he has all authority in heaven and earth. He has authority and power over the wind and the seas and the waves. He created all things. His name is Jesus and I want his name over my life. Amen. Amen. I heard somebody say something the other day. He said, well, you need to call Jesus Yeshua. Because the letter J was not even created until 500 years ago. Well, can I tell you something? Uh, I don't speak 500 year ago language. I speak today language. His name's Jesus today. And I believe Jesus created all the languages, including the ones that hyphenated languages, including Spanglish. I believe he understands what you're doing. I don't believe you can call on Jesus and have some Jesus answer the phone. I believe there's only one God. And when you call Jesus up on the prayer line, Jesus answers the prayer line. Amen? Why make God so difficult? Why make God so hard? I'm telling you what, living for Jesus is easy. If you'll stand on your feet and say, I'm just going to do it. It's time. It's my time. I'm going to fight for Jesus. There's some things worth fighting for. Jude 3. I think I used this scripture, my first message here, or one of my first. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation. Here's some things worth fighting for. It was needful for me to write unto you. Why? Because you needed to be reminded of the common salvation. What is the common salvation? Acts chapter 2 and verse 38. And then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you and to your children. And all that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. This is the common salvation. And it was needful for me to remind you of and to exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. I know there's a salvation out there that a lot of people are saying, if you'll just confess it with your heart and sign your name on the church roll, shake the preacher's hand, everything's all right. Can I tell you something, Sister Chaw, whatever, Emmerich right there, it's not in the Bible that way. You can read the Bible from cover to cover. It never says it that way. It never proclaims it that way. It doesn't even hint it that way. The Bible clearly says from the beginning to the end that if you want to change in your life, if you don't want to be lost, you've got to repent of your sins. You've got to be forgiven of your sins. You've got to be baptized in Jesus' name. And you've got to receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And when you get the Holy Ghost, you're going to speak with some unknown tongues. And you're going to have a change. You're going to walk a holy and upright life. I want to tell you what the common salvation says. Well, if you go and sign your name on the church roll, you just live any old way. You can't shoot your way out with a Tommy gun. The Bible doesn't declare that. It's a common thing that people are making up. And all these, oh, it's so oh, they got buildings full of people, but they don't have a building full of people that believe the word of God because they have been deceived. They have been put to sleep. Why? Because they didn't fight for their own salvation. The word of God says you've got to work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. You got to fall on your face before God and you got to listen to God and you got to hear his word and you got to stand for his word. Oh, it doesn't matter what I do. Let me tell you something. The word of God clearly declares that it matters what you do. You gotta fight, you gotta fight, you gotta fight. It's worth fighting for. For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation. Ungodly men turning the grace of God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. I'm going to tell you what. There are some people that are denying God. They're denying who He is. Oh, He's the little, little God. He's the in-between God. Well, there's the Daddy God, the Son God, the f little Father God, the little Holy Spirit God, Holy Spook Jesus. Let me tell you something. There is not three persons of a Godhead. There is only one God. Jesus declared that, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. When you have seen me, John 10 and 30, you've seen the Father. I'm going to tell you what. 
there's one God. Deuteronomy 6 and 4 tells it. Jesus says it over and over and over again. When you've seen me, you've seen the Father. I'm going to tell you what. The enemy would like to come in and tell you there's three gods, nine gods. Right now, it's going around big time that there's two gods. Can I tell you something? That it's worth fighting for because thou, thou believe this old McVeigh man that there is only one God. Oh, excuse me, I got that wrong. If thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well for the devils also believe and tremble. Will thou do this old vain man that faith without works is dead? It's worth fighting for that there's one God. Standing on your feet, look at him. I'm going to tell you what, you can't argue the word of God. Well, preacher, you don't understand what that means. You be uneducated. What did we say? Acts chapter 4, whenever the apostles went before the, the council and they got there and there was all these, these wise men and all these smart aleck folks and people that knew the Bible inside and out and couldn't stand on the Bible and proclaim that Jesus was God. They had just crucified Jesus and they looked at Peter and John and said, Oh my goodness, these men are unlearned. But they've been with Jesus. We better shut up because they've been with Jesus and they may be unlearned all get out. But look, that dude's walking. He's been sitting there for 40 years and now he's walking. I better shut my mouth. Why? Lest God touch me. I'm going to tell you what, you can argue all you want, but the Word of God stands on the Word of God. The Word of God is strong. The Word of God is firm. It's worth fighting for. It's worth fighting to believe that God created the heaven and earth. It's worth fighting for that it only took six days to make the sun, moon, the stars, and all the planets and everything that is therein. And you might sit up all night long listening to George Norrie Coast and they talk about all the little gray-headed uh, uh, aliens. Can I tell you what? God made them in the same six days that He made everything else. If they're real. Now what I really like is all the people that believe in UFOs and all, most of them are, are atheists. They tell you, you, say, I can't believe in God. I've never seen Him. Can I tell you what? You've never seen Him aliens you talk about all the time. You want to believe in it, you can believe in it. I don't care. I think it'd be pretty cool to meet some. Be pretty neat one of these days. Nanu, nanu. For those of you that remember Mork and Mindy. <laughs> can I tell you something though? It's worth fighting for. I didn't evolve from some chimpanzee. I didn't come out of some chicken egg. I'm going to tell you what. God made me out of the dust of the earth. He breathed into me the breath of life. And I became a living soul. And it's worth fighting for. It's worth believing in. I don't care how much stuff you throw at me. It's still true. The Word of God has never been proved to be a lie. While the whole scientific world said the earth was flat, the Bible said it was a spear. So why on earth would you argue with the Word of God now? Why would people argue that there is salvation in any other name? Why would anybody argue that you need to be baptized any other way than what the Word of God says? I'm telling you what, if the Word of God can reveal things of nature that all of science still ain't figured out, I'm going to tell you something. You need to trust God. Put God, man, I don't care what you say, it's in the Word. I like old Russell. Russell come to God, got the Holy Ghost. He didn't know too much. He had read through the book of John. He found that scripture, John 10 and 30. I and my father are one. And as he was teaching and instructing these boys going off over to, to, uh, to Iraq and Afghanistan. And, and guess what? They come through there and he teach them how to throw a hand grenade. It takes about eight seconds. You pull a pin, you throw it, duck down, it blows up, it's all over with. That's how easy it is. So he had lots of time to talk to them. Next thing you know, he'd always get them in a conversation. And he said, they'd come up with the scriptures and they tried this and they say that and they'd say the other about this Trinitarian God thing and sister you know what he'd say he said I don't know a whole lot but I know this scripture it says John 10 and 30 I and my father are one uh, I don't understand how you get three out of one okay I'm hurrying fight for the truth Fight for heavenly things. Paul said, For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought the good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is therefore laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me in that day, and not to me only, but to all them that love His appearing. Oh, let me tell you something. 
Can I tell you something, young people? There's laid up for you a crown of righteousness. If you'll keep the faith, Brother Carlos, if you'll fight a good fight. Sister Mary, if you'll stand strong. Sister, whatever your name is, who cares? If you'll stand for Jesus, don't back down. Realize it's worth fighting for. There is a crown of righteousness laid up for you, for all those that love is appearing. Can I tell you something? Your family's worth fighting for. Your family is worth fighting for. Your wife is worth fighting for. Your husband's worth fighting for. They're not worth fighting. They're worth fighting for. Can I say that again? They're not worth fighting. They're worth fighting for. You don't understand, Pastor. My husband slash wife, whatever you have. He's just a fool. She's just a fool. They done burnt my toast the last three days. Shape it, scrape it to the shade you like it. Tell her how good she did. And you might get it one day like you like it. It's worth fighting for. It's worth fighting for. We got marriage camp coming up. Yes, this is a plug for marriage camp. Your marriage is worth fighting for. If you skip marriage camp, you're a fool. Yes, you may be seated. Your walk with God's worth fighting for. Being faithful to God is worth fighting for. It's worth getting up and coming to church and getting the word in your spirit. Why? Because the enemy is always at your door. The enemy is always knocking. Sin and lieth at the door is what Jesus said. I'm telling you, church, it's worth fighting for to live for God, to walk a holy and upright life, to live for God day and night, never turning to the left or to the right. It's worth fighting for. Why? Because God will bless you and he will bless you abundantly. Sorry. Your kids are worth fighting for. Kids, this is your part. See, y'all listen to me. He's worth fighting for. It's worth fighting for your kids. It's worth seeing them saved. I'm going to tell you something. One of these days, Sister Red House, I'm going to pick on you because I know Sister Najoni would never do this. But one of these days, Sister Najoni is going to stand up and talk back to you and not want to come to church. Can I tell you something? She's worth fighting for. Bring her to church. Because let me tell you something. Every day the drug dealers are fighting for that little girl right there. Every day the boys on the block are fighting for that little girl right there. Every day, everything in this world is fighting for her. Let me tell you something. Every time your kid logs on the internet, it may not be easy. It may be work. Can I tell you? I'm going to pick on Sister Shame. You have all them children? I can pick on Sister Shame too. You got all them children? You had them? Fight for them. They want to hide in a corner with the tablet? Ye might, let me tell you something. You need to get up every day and fight to make sure your boys and girls aren't looking at pornographic sites. Because them sites are looking for them. Let me tell you something. One of these days, I'm going to pick it all you kids that ain't got no kids. One of these days, you're going to have kids. Let me tell you something. Don't let rebellion spring up in them. Not once. Why? Because they're worth fighting for. Because rebellion is, is a sin of witchcraft. Let me tell you something. Whenever you rebel against your parents' kids, you're just like a witch. And the Bible, God, says that a witch ought not to live. And you know what the Bible says? If you don't obey your mother and your father, you're not going to live a long life. It's worth fighting for. Let me tell you something, young people. Your attitude is worth fighting for. If you've got a rebellious streak, it's worth fighting to get it out of your life. Let me tell you why it's worth fighting for. Because if you'll fight for it with your mama and your daddy, I'll pick on Sister Jess back there. If Sister Jess, when you was a teenager, if you wouldn't have been rebellious against your mama, you have a whole lot better situation right now. Because you know what happens? It's like this. When I rebelled against mama and daddy, I put a rebellious seed in my heart. The next thing I did is I started rebelling against society. I started, you know, have you ever, have you ever wondered why people fight for the dumbest things? They never fight for the good things. They fight for the dumb things. Do you know it's not convenient to be a crackhead? It's stupid to be a meth addict. 
It's dumb to sniff coke. It's dumb to smoke pot. It's dumb to smoke cigarettes. It's dumb, dumb, dumb. You see all these people that are drunks and alcoholics and you think it's cool to drink beer. You're fighting for stupidity. Why not fight for what's right? It's worth it. It's worth it. It's worth it. If you smoke cigarettes, drink beer, smoke crack, I'm sorry, I'm just saying the truth. I love you still. <laughs> Naomi's a pretty young lady. Stand up here and show everybody how pretty you are. Come here. Can I tell you what? If you'll just do what's right, how would you like to look in the mirror one day and like your teeth all rotten out and stuff like that from smoking too much crack? I mean, you brush your teeth every day, but the crack just starts eating it up. That's not good. You see, I'm picking at you, baby. Love you. My dad always called cigarettes ugly sticks. Give it time. <laughs> and your lines grow in your face. And Where was the world before? Where is my little girl before the world took her away? You know where are you? The world took her away because you didn't fight for her. You gotta fight. Man, you've got to stop excusing his parents. I'm going to start talking to you right now. I didn't, I didn't pick on the kids about their rebellion. But parents, listen to me. When your little Johnny, your little Carlos over there starts back talking you and starts running his mouth. At, yeah, I'm talking about the little one, the big one right there. Yeah. <laughs> tell you something. Don't put up with it. It's not just a stage. Stop it! While it's small, it's worth fighting for. Because if you'll fight for it, you won't have to kill a dragon later. <laughs> Brother Carlos, you send Naomi and Carlos, uh, Junior there, Noah, to your mother-in-law's house? I know she's your mother-in-law. But they come back smarting off at you? And, and, and... Huh? Uh, you know what? Grandma's supposed to spoil them. But if they, can't, if they can't come home and remember that you're daddy, and that you're in charge, and that what you say goes, you need to stop sending them over there. I love your sister Mary, but I'm telling you what's best for your grandkids. Now, I know you, I hope that doesn't happen. And if I just nailed the nail on the head, I needed to. I don't care if it's family. I don't care. Look, uh, Sister Najoni, you, she, she starts hanging out at church at the swim team. And next thing you know, she's bad-mouthing her, uh, not at church, but at school. And she's bad-mouthing her mom and running her mouth at her mom. Can I tell you what? Swim team stops right now. But my little Johnny's going to hate me. Are they not worth fighting for? Boy, that's some good preaching. Let me get out of your way because I know y'all running the aisles. I'm going to tell you right now, I don't care who it is that's influencing your children. You stop it. If you love your kids, you'll stop it right now. They won't talk to them on the phone. They won't see them on the playground. You'll change. Let me tell you something. Oh, God. Would you get your kids out of school if the principal was pushing drugs on your kids? Answer me. Yes or no? Yes. Well, why on earth would you let your kids keep hanging around a rebellion pusher? A lie teacher. Well, I want, you know, my kids got to have friends. Can I tell you what? If your friends are killing your kids, why are you letting them hanging around them? Why aren't you turning the television off? They're watching that stupid junk and they're learning the junk. Let me tell you something. There, there are bad cartoons out there on the Cartoon Channel. Some of you might need to get your kids' TV out of their room. Young people say, Amen, Brother Dunn. Amen. I love these kids. Some of your parents might need to get their TVs out of your room too if you can't... Hello? Some of our adults may need adult content filtering on their internet. Some of y'all need to pay attention to the games you buy your kids. Hello? The amount of time... Not because everything... In it. Let me tell you something. I mean, everybody, as soon as you start preaching like this and tell you it's worth fighting for, everybody's like, Oh my goodness, he preaches against everything. Can I tell you something? The Bible says everything in moderation. Hello? Everything in moderation. There is right, and you can get carried away with, with pickle juice and die. 
You could drink too much water and die. Can I tell you something? There are some things that are not bad for you. This is a... I, Sister Johnson, do you love me enough to let me just really pick on you real good and have fun with it? Can I tell you something? Candy Crush will ruin relationships. <laughs> Nothing wrong with Candy Crush. That woman plays it every day from the time she gets it. Not really. I know you don't. I'm just picking at you. I'm having fun. But if you're not careful, Candy Crush will cause you to lose your job. Now I'm picking on you. I love you. I'm just I'm having fun. You pick your own thing that you got your problem with. Hello? Let me tell you something. Do you realize, Sister, Sister Knowlton, you, you work for the food bank, right? Mm -hmm. Feeding homeless people can destroy your marriage because your first responsibility is to be your husband's wife. But you don't understand. If I don't go feed the homeless, nobody will. Guess what? That's the homeless's problem. Let me just be honest with you. It's their problem. God did not raise this church or you up to take care of everybody else. If you don't work, you don't eat. Bible says that. Now, can you still feed the homeless? Absolutely. I do. I believe in it. I believe in helping people in need. Don't misunderstand me. Don't carry stuff. But let me tell you something. You better put what's first first. You better fight for what's right. Because if you don't fight for what's right, you'll lose everything. Hey, Brother Dunn, you don't understand. If Johnny boy don't stay with me, he has nowhere else to stay. He's teaching your children horrible habits. He's eating your food that you don't have enough money to buy. You don't have a savings account because you've been feeding somebody that should be feeding themselves. Your little soft heart is killing your family. Fight for your family! Oh God, that's too good of preaching right there. I'm going to hurry because y'all, I know you, you don't like this kind of preaching. Fight for the fruit of the Spirit. Galatians 5, 22. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, meekness, goodness, faith, temperance. Let me tell you something. You need to fight to make that happen. You know how you fight to make that happen? On your knees. God, change me. God, change me. Make me what you want me to be. I want to be what you want me to be. I'm going to fight for the work of God. I'm going to fight for the Word of God. I want to fight for the good things in my life. Almost finished. There is a way... To remove oppression. And it's worth fighting for. It's very difficult. It's exactly what I was talking about. About kids and family and all that kind of stuff. And husbands and wives and marriages. Can I tell you something what it is? It's called judgment. We're too squeamish about standing up and calling wrong, wrong. Hello? We need to learn to judge ourselves. You don't want to know why you're oppressed? Because you have not judged yourself. You have not looked in the mirror and said, Oh boy, Timothy Dunn, you've got problems. You need to straighten it up right now. You know why God's not blessing you. It's because you're fighting against God. You're not doing what's right. Judgment removes oppression. Okay, I'll give you scriptures for it. Since none of y'all believe me. Psalm chapter 72 and verse 4. He shall judge the poor of the people, and he shall save the children of the needy, and shall break in pieces the oppressor. Well, that's one scripture. Okay, I'll give you another one. Jeremiah 21 and 12. O Lord, O house of David, thus saith the Lord, execute judgment in the morning, and deliver him that is spoiled out of the hand of the oppressor. Let my fury go out like fire and burn that none can quench it because of the evil of your doings. And whenever you're willing to stand up and look yourself in the mirror and cause judgment, when you're willing to look in your relationship between a husband and wife and judge the situation, the reason why we got marital problems is because we're not praying anymore. We don't pray together. We don't seek God together. We don't fast together. We don't go to church together. We don't have a common purpose in living for God. And that's what's wrong with us. Kid, the reason you're rebellious is because I let it go on too long. It stops now. No more. It's finished. It's over. Game's over. The devil will not tempt you anymore. Let me tell you something. Let me just tell you a little secret. There has been, all of us are all protective of our little girls and boys because there's people out there that wants to abuse them. I'm going to tell you something that you ain't ever thought of. Do you realize that drugs have destroyed more little girls' and boys' life 
And now you, we don't need either one of them. I'm just telling you that right now. Let's start off right there. Let me get that clear. Drug dealers and drugs have destroyed more little boys and girls lives than every pervert there ever has been. Let me tell you something. We keep putting up and lollygagging with this stuff and letting it around us. Let me tell you something. You need to push to pull pu a pill pusher out of your life. You need to get more. I don't care if it's prescription pills. I don't care if you got it prescribed. You better make sure you need it. Hello? That's, that's good preaching, Brother Dunn. I, I thank you. Lord bless you, Brother Dunn. Hallelujah. Amen. That, I, I know too many families have been destroyed by that prescription stuff. Thank you for preaching that, Brother Dunn. You're welcome. I'll tell you something. But you better watch over your kids and watch who they hang with and watch who their buddies are at school. Because let me tell you something. They're pushing that stuff every day, every day, every day, every day. And they're not backing down. They don't get embarrassed anymore. They done got their pot legalized. When we're done, you just don't think smoking pot's all right? Let me tell you something. Smoking pot's the dumbest thing in the world you could do. Hello? Let me tell you all. The, go look at these potheads. And tell me you want to be like them? Well, I can control myself. I'll tell you something. You can't. None of them did. And everybody... Yeah, you should have seen what happened last night. I was high as a kite. I went over to my friend's house and I got on the couch and went to sleep and it wasn't my friend's house. It was so fun. I got arrested. I can't wait to do it again Friday night. Really? Really? You just spent $500 to get bailed out of jail and you're going to have to lose a day's work to go to court and get another fine and a probation. Lady got up and testified just a week or so ago. I started smoking cigarettes. And once I got over the fear of smoking cigarettes, of smoking, I started smoking pot, started smoking crack, started doing drugs of all kinds, started sniffing cocaine, started taking any pill they give me. You know why? Because it starts somewhere. I'm going to tell you where it starts. Y'all want to know where it starts? With rebellion. Because let me tell you something. That spirit of witchcraft, what does the Bible say? Witchcraft in Ephesians, where it talks, Galatians, excuse me, it talks about witchcraft. What does witchcraft mean in that scripture? Somebody tell me. Come on. I preach it. Who? Pharmaceuticals. In other words, popping pills. I don't care if it comes from the natural source food store or whether it comes from. And when they start mixing concoctions, they're trying to put over on you. They're trying to control nature. That's what a witch does. A witch tries to control nature by her power and her wisdom and not by God. When Jesus spoke to the wind and the waves, he didn't need to do a rain dance. He spoke it and it stopped. Why? Because God was on the inside of him and God answered him. When jo uh, 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 Joshua called, raised his hands and the sun stood still. Why? Because God worked with him. He didn't need to come up with some mantra. He didn't need to read a story out of a book. He didn't need to have chicken feathers or blood or an eagle feather. He just called on God. Let me tell you, that's the difference between trying to do it yourself. That's why rebellion is, is a sin of witchcraft. Because when you rebel... You you're trying to overcome the authority that is rightfully placed over you. The authority of God is rightfully placed over your life. And when you try to start adjusting it... Okay, you ready? Upward correction is rebellion. Sister Shammy, you said amen, so I'm going to pick on you. I love you. You call me tomorrow and tell me how I didn't have the Word of God and how I should have preached it like this. and how I, That's upward correction. That's rebellion. How many of y'all realize sometimes you, your boss says it wrong? Can I tell you how to correct it correctly? When he says jump, you say how high. Get it done, then go have a private talk with him in a polite way. You're not correcting him. You were submitted to him. And then you gave your opinion after you showed your righteous spirit. Young people, sometimes. No, they don't. But sometimes you think mom and dad get it wrong. Do the same thing. Obey mom and dad with a smile on your face and a good spirit. And after it's over and the time has passed, have a conversation, not a shouting match. If you'll do that, your voice will be heard because you have quenched the spirit of rebellion. Hello?
never compromise with rebellion. It's the wrong thing to do. Sin is rebellion before God and God does not compromise on sin. He's never going to look at you and say, what your sin is, I love you so much, I'm going to accept it. He said, repent and turn from your wicked ways. When you turn, God forgives you. When you turn, man, let me tell you something. If you come in here a liar of liars and God forgives you and you walk out there and lie again, that lie is going to be held against you. God doesn't just say, well, you know, a lot of people use these scriptures that say, uh, all this stuff begins at the house of God. Can I tell you something? When you leave the altar, you better stop what you're doing. Because all these people, it says this, this kind of stuff begins at the house of God. And when you came in the house of God, everything you did yesterday is all in the past. And you keep living like... Let me tell you something. People living in adultery and they're in the house of God is still wrong whether you're in the house of God or not. It didn't go away just because you got, in the whole, got, the, got church and God forgave you one time. You got to stop it. You got to stop it. You got to stop it. I'm going to tell you something. Adultery is rebellion against God. Fornication is sin against God. How many of y'all want to sin against the throne of heaven? Not me. But it's worth fighting for. You're flesh will rare up there will be some good looking female lady woman and she'll be worth looking at but let me tell you something she's worth fighting your flesh over and not yielding to that Amen. hello there'll be some cowboy come in to do drop in and he'll do the two step and you'll see his big old belt buckle his hat his boots and his jeans and you'll say Ooh, big boy your integrity is worth fighting for because let me tell you something. I just say this to the boys and the girls and the men and the women. One time and you're a cheap slut just like every other one out there. Don't tell me you slept around and you ain't as cheap as everybody else that slept around. Ooh, preacher, that's preaching. That's, that's such a... One time. Hello? Sin is sin. Can I tell you what? If you walked in this door and I offended you by sin in your life, can I tell you what? Jesus loved to forgive you of all your sins. He'd like to make it where you never did it. He'll turn you from a drug deal and a drug addict and a shameful person, someone that's been abused and someone has been crushed, someone full of rebellion and sin and tranquility and problems and all this, and he'd like to give you a new life. He'd like to wash away all your sins. He'd like to make you clean and holy. He would like to turn you from a sinner to a saint right now. He's that kind of God. All you got to do is say, Jesus, my life is worth fighting for. My heavenly goal is worth fighting for. If living for God's worth fighting for, why don't you stand to your feet, throw your hands in the air, and make up your mind tonight. You're going to fight to live for God. I'm going to fight to make heaven my home. There is therefore going to be laid up for me crowns of righteousness. And when my race is run, when my fight is over, I will have fight. No one can say I didn't fight because they will have seen me fight for that which is right. Your family's worth fighting for. Come on, talk to God right now. Give it to God. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Let me tell you something else. This church is worth fighting for. You're worth fighting for, every last one of you. I get on my knees and I fight for you day and night. When you got problems in your home and your family, when you're sick in your body, you're worth fighting for. And we'll keep fighting for you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord, I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I'm going to tell you what, this is worth fighting for. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Your kids' education is worth fighting for. But don't pat yourself on the parent if you're not fighting for their walk with God. Amen? Make sure they do their homework. Make sure they pray. Make sure they read their Bible. Amen. Lord, love you. You're dismissed in Jesus' name. Fight for that which is right.